And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best Shimano. And by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here with Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, Captain's Mark and Marcus Medak, and Adam Williams, New Low Ann, out of Point Lemon Sport Fishing, talking some great fishing here aboard the New Low Ann. Both uh, Colonet trips right now, this coming weekend, or... Uh, Go for bluefin tuna. Who knows? Could yeah. happen in January again. <laughs> it's going to happen at some point. You know, whether it's this weekend or the following or two weekends from now. Like, there's just there's too much fish that was around, is around, currently around. Like a good a good little piece of window weather window. Like you know you know Adam's going to catch a bunch of yellow in the morning and then make a drift and catch a bunch of reds and then have half a day to get squirrely and go catch a bluefin. Like, you know it's going to happen, whether it's this weekend or the following. That That is going to be a thing for sure. So it's pretty cool pretty cool fishing going on right yeah, now. Yeah, it is. And we're giving away a great prize. You're not kidding, man. Well, if you didn't hear, one lucky caller at the end of the show today is going to get to go fishing. You're getting a one-day trip going fishing on board the beautiful New Loan at a Point Loma Sport Fishing. That's going to one lucky caller at the end of the show today. And if you want to get a chance to win that prize or your chance to talk to Adam or Marcus, 858 area code 457 1090. Again, 858 457 1090. That's our local number. Or you can reach us toll free. That toll free line 877 792 1090. Again, 877 792 1090. All right. Hey, look who's on the line. Captain Renee aboard the Shogun. Good morning, Renee. What's up, Renee? Hey, good morning, guys. How you guys doing? Doing great. We heard a little bit yesterday that you guys have got a fantastic trip going on, or at least a wrap up of a of a great trip on board the Shogun. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. It was a light, light load. Uh, fished the lower banks. We did pretty good. We uh, I think we had eight, or not yeah, eight cows, and uh, one that was right around three thirty. Jeez. <laughs> this was a seven-day fly-down, fly-back on the Shogun, right? Correct. Yeah, wow. It was a, Which is a unique trip for this time of year. Pretty cool that you guys, you know, kind of went into it figuring you'd focus on either the lower banks or the, you know, the areas outside of, you know, mainland Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, Mazalan kind of thing. Like, a, a lot of things were were open to you and in a somewhat untraditional area, untraditional time, but... Obviously, a, a highly successful trip with that many big ones, especially considering the the amount of guys you had on the boat. Yeah, you know, it was pretty lucky. I think we were fortunate to have the fishing that we uh, came across. We had a lot of, uh, you know, anywhere from 60 to 150 pound fish, pretty steady. Uh, there was a few slow days where, you know, the water rolled over, but other than that, everything was pretty good all the guys had at least a handful of fish that's oh, awesome, so. Renee. that is awesome and you left out of cabo san lucas went back into cabo san lucas how many actual days uh were you fishing how many how many days of that seven days were there lines in the water uh that was six days that's, six days of <laughs> that's awesome wow that is so cool those guys must have been an absolute heaven catching 300 pounders and lots of good sized fish and being able to fish that long and then fly home, that must have been just incredible. I mean, think about having shots at obviously two and three hundred pounders virtually every day and only missing a week of work. You know, I mean, you you're, you throw the weekends in there, you're only missing one week's worth of work on something that would normally take you, you know, 15 or 16 days to be able to have that caliber of fishing. Right. No, they totally, they scored. They, they definitely, uh, you know, just flew down, we picked them up, and we went instantly to fishing. Well, how did how'd the 330-pounder come aboard, Renee? Oh, man, that was a good story. The guy uh, was hanging out. You know, we had some guys sitting in lounge chairs for the kites. It's such, such a light load back there. It was kind of, it was just weird looking at the people fishing. Uh, <laughs> there was only, you know, a handful at the rail, really. Uh, but the guy was hanging out. 
soaking a mackerel for probably about 35 minutes or so, and he was instantly rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's awesome. It was a pretty good battle. The guy was on it for a little, uh, probably about 45 minutes or so. It wasn't that long of a battle, <laughs> but he, uh, he got lucky. That's great, man. Yeah, right, right tackle, and he went on pretty quickly. That's but, so awesome. Well, awesome. Well, what, when are the show going to be back in San Diego? Uh, on Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, cool. be unloading that load. And uh, what's next for the Shogun? Uh, we're going to be in, hanging out, doing a little maintenance until uh, February. I think we have some freezer specials going on, th- two or three day trips on the weekends there. Wow. So we're going to sit tight for, uh, I think, you know, maybe a few weeks, two or three weeks, and we go back out on a few trips. Yeah. But, yeah, it was it was a fun trip. Thanks for uh, for getting the call here, guys. Yeah, we're, and, we're, of course, uh, I know one place you'll be next Saturday, <laughs> and that will be right here in the Mighty 1090 Studios, uh, yeah. Captain Renee and the new ca- your new co-captain aboard New co-captain and partner aboard the Shogun, Captain Paul Carameo, huh? Yeah, we're pumped. Yeah, I bet That's you're excited good. about having Paul, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a good buddy of mine. Pretty stoked to have him partner up with me. Well, we're, uh, hi, Cole. Yeah, we're really stoked for you, Renee. That's awesome. We're excited to get to talk about it next weekend. Indeed. Well, we'll see you Saturday right here in the studio and safe travel home. And thanks for uh, host, uh, giving us a report on that great trip aboard the Shogun. Appreciate it, Renee. Nice job. All right, guys. Thanks. See you, buddy. Have a good day. Keep right. your eyes open on Monday on the way home. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well. right. right. See ya. Everybody. All right. Well, the phone lines are packed. Everybody's excited to talk to Adam, talk to Marcus. Let's jump right back into the phones. This time we're going to talk to Derek, calling us from Lake Elsinore this morning. Hey, Derek, welcome to the show. Good morning, Derek. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I, my question was... Uh, what do you, if you have an opinion on the uh, pre-rigged uh, flat falls that you can get at some of the stores that uh, come with the heavier, uh, you know, leader and the, the hooks, are they as effective as the original Shimano flat falls? I, I suppose it depends on what store you get it from. <laughs> yeah, that's key. Now, you talked about... Um, Switching out the the original Shimano Five Falls have been the one that they've proven the two to two fifty. Right. Yeah. And you know, if if you're getting it from a good tackle shop that knows what they're doing, yeah, it's probably way better than than the stock. But you know, you you, you got to consider the source. Yeah. And your thought on the having the hooks all over the place? It's just that's not what you do on the new low end. That's not what we like. There's guys that have luck with that though. Yeah, but you like to switch the original hooks out to Absolutely. a heavier hook. We, we never fish the stock hooks. Yeah, and it's and it's not a fixed hook. It is it is a what do you call those little assist hook. assist hook? Mm-hmm. It is an assist hook. That That's what we like. Have. I mean, there's guys that you know there sure. there's a lot of different theories of what guys think works the best, but we we've, we've had pretty consistent success that way. I'm going to take it from the guys that topped the fleet this year and put the assist hooks on. Yeah. I think that's a good call. Our play at least at Fisherman's Landing like our our goal is just to mirror what exactly exactly what you just said. I mean there's there are a couple of boats that that do very very well consistently and we just, you know, we like to provide what those boats like. I mean if you're going where, whatever it is, if you're going on the new Loan, we can say with comp, you know, those guys are all buddies of ours. And we can say, well, this is how those guys like fishing. If you're going on the Queen, we can say, well, this is the rig that those guys like, and this is the jig that, that they, you know. At the end of the day, as long as it's rigged appropriately, they all work, you know, regardless of size and color and hook size. As long as it's done right, there's a lot of ways it works just fine. And I always think that, like, you as a passenger, you're just, you're one step better if you have the same thing that that particular boat and crew likes to have. Like, when you're attached to the rail, pulling on a big one, and Adam's standing next to you while you're whining on that big fish, and, you know, and, and, and he knows that it's the exact same rig that he would go on there, there's just one level of confidence better, whether it's welded rings with swivels or it's assist hooks and cord or whatever the, you know, as long as it's done right, I think you're in pretty good shape. All right, there you go. Good answer. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Appreciate that. That does free up for the first time in quite a while, 
1090. How about we talk to Wade from Camarillo this morning? Hi, Wade. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Wade. Good morning. Morning. What's up, Wade? Hey, I'd like to congratulate you guys on putting together an epic 2018 season. I got an opportunity uh, on one of your trips in November and just had so much fun. It was great. Yeah, did you catch some fish? Oh, absolutely. I got a 203 and a 175. Wow, wait, wait, wait. A 203 and a 175? Yeah. I was at uh, fourth quarter moon phase early in November. Um, it was just an epic time of the month. Wow. Uh, I got a question about your schedule. I'm on the Point Loma website almost daily looking for that Western Outdoor News event that fishes the end of June to appear on your schedule. When do you think that might happen? Well, the Western, News, Western Outdoor News one? Uh, you know, not sure if we're going to do it this year, honestly. Well, you, you're the trophy holder. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of, you know, they changed the format of that tournament, and so... We're going to see what happens. Yes. We're going to see what happens on that one. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll keep my eye out. I'll keep checking the schedule, see what's okay. uh, yeah. what up. Yeah, and also, wait, of course, uh, check Western Outdoor News. You know, they're going to be promoting that uh, their tournament there, and, and I'm sure Western Outdoor News will have all the information for you and all the, the latest info on that that tournament that they host in June. And if New Orleans not participating, well, I'm sure there's a lot of other boats will be yeah. involved that you can jump aboard for sure. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Appreciate that, and congratulations on your big fish. You you remember that, Adam, huh? You remember oh, yeah. this guy? Yeah, yeah, I Wade. know Wade. I know Wade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Caught some fish. That's a solid fish. limit, a, yeah. a, a 200 to 175. Solid limit. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we plugged the hold on that trip. He, he was lucky to be on that. One of those... Two and three quarter days in so November. Cool. So. It was a two yeah. and three quarter day. Yep. That is yep. so cool. So he was talking about the last, the fourth quarter moon. Did it make a difference, the moon phase? It's really hard to say. I, we've kind of caught him in all moon phases, but seems like right before and right after. Seems like, what do you think, Marcus? Right before the full, right after the full? Yeah. Hard to I say. I mean, I think right, right as you're going into it, it seems like it's the most consistent Maybe it's the amount of water movement, you know, the tides are the strongest right then, or I don't know. But it, it, it seems fairly consistent to me that uh-huh. we have fishing. Not, not that you didn't have good not fishing that we don't on have good other fish. mood phases. Right. Exactly. You caught them on all mood phases. We have. Maybe. We have. But it, 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 it's a little boost to the confidence, you know. Maybe sure. better nighttime opportunities occasionally. Oh, really? Phase. Okay. I think so. Yeah. It's always good excuse when it doesn't happen. It never, it's never the reason. It's never the reason that it did. It's always the good excuse as to why it didn't. Yeah, that's indeed. that's that's the moon wrapped up in one shot. Hey, we're gonna find out what's going on on the water right now. It's time for your fishdope.com report by the man, Captain Dave Hansen, your saltwater guide. Today, the catch board is sponsored by the Fish Pros at Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Not only do they offer the best fish processing for your trip when you return to the San Diego landings, now with Fish Pros the market, you can purchase fresh fish, smoked and jerked. Turkey fish, spices, rubs, and the smoked cheese, and their famous tuna burger. Pick up some at their Liberty Station location or order online at Fisherman'sProcessing.com. Let's talk to the man, Captain Dave Hansen's on the line. What's up, Dave? Well, good morning, guys. How are you guys today? Doing great. Good morning, good morning. Dave. Are you back on this side of the line? Yes, I am. I'm at home hanging out with Kelly right now, getting ready to watch the Chargers win. Oh, very good. All right. Yeah. Well, they got yeah. their hands full today. Yeah. I yeah, they do. I, I, yeah. I'm not, I don't know. I'm, got, I'm just glad the Rams won. Yeah, they <laughs> did. It would be cool to see the Rams and the Chargers in the Super Bowl, wouldn't it? It would be. Uh, but, hey, guys, I came back to some phenomenal fishing offshore in front of Dana Point Harbor. My goodness. Monday we got in. Tuesday morning one of my buddies stopped by the boat. They had 18 yellows on the boat, all that 8- to 12-pound fish, like 5 to 8 miles out of Dana Point, all kelp patty fish, and the stuff just kept biting all week. They just kept biting. There was like five patties out in front of the harbor that were all holding yellows, and it was pretty good fishing. You know, average fish was eight pounds. Biggest fish I think that I saw was 15 pounds, but kelp patty yellows in January in front of Dana Point in 62-degree water, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, and then uh, over at the island, they I heard the, from a couple of my buddies that the lobster fishing was very, very good up towards the west end of Catalina. 
And then Long Beach Harbor was very, very good fishing last night for a couple of my buddies that were out there. We got a bunch of weather this week, so you got to pay attention to the weather. But it doesn't look like a phenomenal amount of wind on the inside, so I think you guys can still get out there and look at those kelps out in front of Dana Point, between Dana Point and Oceanside. And uh, that lobster fishing should be really good this week with all the rain that we're going to have. I know it really pushes those lobsters around. They hate that fresh water. So there's still no reason to not go fishing. The only reason to not go fishing, I can't even imagine what it might be. <laughs> so you got to get out there and go fishing, guys. Indeed. And, of course, uh, Danny, Jeff, and the boys at fishdope.com have been staying in touch with you, Mark, and everybody else about keeping people where to go on the fishing grounds. 20 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com. Use the code HOOKUP now. Lowercase, no space. Hook up now is the $20 code at fishdope.com. You get 365 days of reports there from all the top guys. And, Dave, I've noticed you've put a lot of new contact at your saltwater guide. A lot of new content uh, up there and a lot of good advice, maintenance, and local fishing, and even talking about lobsters. So how do we find you? Well, guys, my website, We I kind of was out of the country for three months, so it kind of – we weren't really hitting it as hard as we should have been, so now we're back, and we just threw a ton of content up there on YourSaltWaterGuide.com. And like I say all the time, it's not a replacement for fish dope. We simply work with fish dope. I'm not telling you where to go, where the fish bit. I'm not telling you to go follow Marcus around on the new low end. I'm just telling you, when you do follow Marcus, when you finally find where he's catching his fish, I'm just teaching you how to catch him. That's all I'm doing. So check out my website <laughs> all right. at YourSaltWaterGuide.com. Very good, Dave. All right, thank you. I've learned a lot from that, and it, it, I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a whopping, what, five bucks a month? Yeah, I know. It's a lot of money. But what I was talking <laughs> All the listeners, I was talking to PD said, anybody that can't afford the four dollars and ninety nine cents, email him. He'll be more than happy to help you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, because Dave will give me a free coupon, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, we'll exactly. cover you somehow, yeah. some way. We'll get you guys on that website. There's really no reason not to be on there. I can't imagine All that right. that four dollars and ninety nine cents will change what you eat this month. All right. Very I'm good, Dave. Like Thanks a, a lot for that. Yeah. And we will talk <laughs> no, to you. No, we're not going to say that, Rick. No yeah. cups of coffee. Yeah. Talk to, you next, talk to you next week, Dave. All right, guys. See Welcome ya. home. All right. Thanks. See you later. All Appreciate right. That. All right. Hey, I want to mention that on our Facebook and Instagram, Let's Talk Hook Up on Facebook, uh, Hook Up 1090 on Instagram, we did post that big eye uh, picture from the Nulu Ann that was caught in, uh, it was October. Yeah, late October. Late October, yeah. yeah, and I posted it on there. It's kind of a funny one because you can't really see how long that pectoral fin is, but it's pretty classic the way the shape. Notice the head, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. and the way the head is more rounded than a typical yellowfin would be more pointed. Would that be right? Yeah, it kind of just almost looks like a gold bluefin. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. In the very, photo anyway. But. Very interesting. So check that out. Uh and thanks to Adam uh, for give, sharing that with us. Uh, face, uh, Let's Talk Hookup Facebook and Instagram. Of course, you can link all of that on the Let's Talk Hookup website, um, letstalkhookup.com. On the top right corner, you can uh, link it uh, all our Facebook, Instagram, and uh, YouTube. Those are our three uh, social media places. And then, of course, on the Let's Talk Hookup app, uh, either in the App Store or the Google Play Store. All of those social media links, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube are on our uh, Let's Talk Hookup app, which you can stream the, the show live. You can actually listen to archives on the show. You can listen to classic archives, find out what guests. Everything is on that Let's Talk Hookup app. So if you haven't downloaded it, it's free. Download it today. And I will have that new content uh, from last weekend's uh, studio shots with John Collins and the Knots. Cool. I'll get that up this week, so watch for that on our YouTube channel. Awesome. Well, the phones are packed. We're going to jump back. You know, everybody wants to talk to Adam, talk to Marcus. Let's talk to Dennis. Call us from Canyon Country this morning. What's up, Dennis? Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, guys. Great morning, show Dennis. again. Hey, got a question for Adam and Marcus about their recommendation for uh, a battling those big bluefin. You know, I've, I've seen some guys, they say, don't pump the rod, just keep straight winding it. Um, I don't know. I just wonder what you guys uh, recommend. Well, if you've got a two-speed reel, you don't, when you're getting down back towards the 
end of the fight, you don't, you're not really doing a whole lot of pumping. You're kind of letting the, the, you know, the rod, as soon as it, you know, the, as it's bent, it'll, it'll start to unload a little bit and you really don't need to pump at that point. You're just getting a wind or a partial wind. If you, you know, if you've got yeah. a two speed, you, you, there's a lot less pumping involved than the old style where we didn't have that magic of leverage. A good, a good rod, a good, you know, a well matched new rod is going to do a lot of the lifting for you. If you can keep the thing on the rail and keep the tip buried with your reel handle, the rod will assist in a lot of the lifting. The rail is your yeah. friend, right? At the very end, you're going to have to do some lifting, right, you know, as we're getting close to gaffing it. But but that big pumping, is if you've got it in low gear, if you're pumping too much, more often than not, you're just going to give the fish a chance to get its head down and take another run. It, it really isn't a very good technique at that point. Adam, uh, when uh, on the boat, on the new Luan, uh were most people using the rail on those bigger fish? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah we... We have some pretty heavy rail rods, a couple of UC rail rods that we've used all year. They, you know, really kind of took a beating, but um, <laughs> on, and so did the rails for that matter. But yeah. uh, That's where the maintenance comes in, right? But mostly, especially big fish, especially kite fish, uh, keeping, keeping tension. A lot of guys will, maybe they get tired on their kite fish and they trade off with another passenger. And in the trade off, lots of times those guys, you know, they'll come unbuttoned because they're, not keeping the yeah, best a little tension. bit of slack, a little yeah. bit of slack, and see you later. All you know? it takes. Yeah. And what about belts and harnesses? Did you have a lot of guys using belts and harnesses? We do, but I not don't. harnesses. I can't remember the last time I no. saw somebody using a harness. But using I'd be afraid of but just pulling belts, right over the side. <laughs> yeah. Just the the rail. The belts don't. I use armpit a lot. Yeah. I, I see a lot of times where people get really focused in on worrying about their belt and they're yes. not paying attention to the fish anymore and all of a sudden it's got slack because they're and busy gone. and then it's gone. Yeah. Right. yeah, that happens a lot for sure. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. All right, how about we jump back into them and talk to Frank calling from El Cajon this morning. Hi, Frank. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good. What's up, Frank? Hey, I got a question here. Uh, I'm from back east, okay? Uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I went out maybe a couple times here fishing. And uh, if I hook onto a uh, bluefin tuna, can I sell it for millions? <laughs> Sushi? Can I do that? Only if you have a commercial fishing license and you're fishing on a commercially licensed boat that allows that. The short answer is no. You no, can't. not if you're fishing you're... on the Lulo and no, you cannot sell that. Oh, I can't. I can't like uh, get a million dollars for a bluefin. <laughs> yeah, I think there you was can't, one. You that can't was... mix a commercial trip and a sport trip in California. I, in some states, you can't. But it, if you're commercial fishing, you're strictly commercial fishing. If you're sport fishing, you're sport fishing. You can't mix and match. I know. If you're in Hawaii, you can sell sport caught fish, but you cannot sell sport caught fish in California. Correct. Yeah, and so there are states oh. that allow it. And uh, but not here. And yeah, I guess there was a, a article oh, a couple weeks ago or last week, five point four million dollars. Some guy paid for a big bluefin in Japan, something like that. Craziness. But good for him. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> money, to, money to burn. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. Appreciate that. All right. How about we jump back in and talk to Don calling from Woodland Hills this morning. Morning, Don. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Don. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking the call. Hey, uh, for the skippers, um, how much fuel does the new Loan hold? And when you're running normally, how much fuel do you burn per hour? <laughs> uh, we hold 850 gallons, and you now it depends how hard we're. And 25 sometimes. You know, it just depends how hard we're running. It's anywhere from 8 to 20 gallons an hour. You told how many gallons? 850. 850 gallons of fuel. Yeah, so you have quite a range. But, well, yeah, it's not really a lot, actually. No, <laughs> no, for that size boat, it's kind of a, it, it, it it's fine. It, it's sure. plenty for all that we do, but we just have to fuel after most of our trips. Every every day and a half trip. And and and, and uh, what's your t what's your normal cruising speed? 
About 10 knots. 10 knots. That's 10, good. 10, 3. Yeah. All right. Very good. Hope that answered your question. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. That does free up 858 457 1090. Been a busy morning. There's your shot. How about Tom from Temecula up next on Let's Talk Cookup? Hi, Tom. Good morning, Tom. Morning. morning, guys. Morning, Marcus and Andrew. Uh, got a couple questions on calling it. Uh, the great yellowtail that are down there, I guess they're bringing back a little bit of yellowtail. And, uh, and then my other question is uh, the last two years on the blue fin, it looks like we've had a, a pattern of really outstanding bluefin fishing really late in the year. Um, could you uh, kind of comment on that? Is it like water conditions or it seems like, you know, late in the year, I guess water uh, conditions are changing a little bit. And I'm not sure if the fish are eating up a lot of the uh, food source and that is, you know, contributing to the really good uh, – a bluefin fishing late in the year, like November, December. And uh, you can comment on those, uh, Marcus. I'd appreciate it. Well, as far as the bluefin being more consistent late in the year, yes, we have absolutely for sure. I do think a part of it is that there's less bait around later in the fall. You know, typically the real productivity in the ocean here is is driven by all the upwelling in the spring and so early summer there's a lot of bait around a lot of food for them usually big bait balls of anchovies and other things and and there's there's a lot of food so they're uh they're not having to work very hard for their food later in the year the water gets real clean and there's not as much bait around i i do you think that's uh, that's a big part of it? Also, oh, for, they're getting hungry. Yeah, I think they're getting hungry. For what? I don't really know why, but for whatever reason, it seems like they really start orienting to structure later in the year. Also, it's a real consistent pattern that later in the year they start really start getting on the fathom curves on the banks or what island, whatever. Um, Maybe that's where the bait is. Yeah, that's probably where the remaining bait is, yeah. I think. And, and when they're on those places, they're easier to target and they tend to bite better. But I, I, I think it is a big part of it that there's less bait available. Right now, it seems like the fish are in here on the beach hitting big bait balls and stuff. And that kind of mode, that's when they start getting challenging to catch there uh-huh. you know they, they, there's too much bait there's too much bait around we can't draw them off from whatever they're on and and early season offshore we just see the same kind of phenomenon yeah adam what about the colonet yellowtail what do you what do you what's your forecast you've been down there already once what's your what are you seeing yeah you know we were down there last weekend uh we had kind of cold off color water it was it wasn't really the best conditions for yellowtail um, although the Pacific Queen spent a lot more time looking for yellowtail, and they, I think they had a dozen at the end of their day or something like oh. that. That nicer grade fish. We actually ended up uh, getting kind of getting it done on the on the rockfish and um, going offshore, and we actually had some kelp paddy yellowtail, which was interesting uh, for this time of year. I know the guys up up north were talking about kelp paddy yellowtail too. We you know we shook quite a few of them off, but there were some some decent size. Uh, fish in the mix, but I think at Colonet, you know, it's kind of always a possibility. Um, you're definitely going to want to come with your uh, yo-yo irons and or dropper loop 50-pound line, something like that. Okay, and so, and, and typically that water will change every trip and could be totally different and the it, yellowtail could move in there. It, it could be, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just Most of that know. yellowtail is yo-yo this time of the year? Oftentimes, yeah. I think call, loop, yeah, fishing Colonet, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What was the quality of your red fishing down there? It, it was very good. Um, we did, I would say, three pretty long drifts, and we, we had the right conditions to do a couple pretty long drifts on the on the outer edge of the bank, and it was it was excellent, That's excellent cool. uh, bottom fishing. Um, once the conditions kind of changed midday, it was a lot harder, a lot more challenging to kind of stay on the ridge. But in the morning, it, it was good for sure. We had some offshore wind. So yeah. And what about the any lingcod? Yeah, we, you know, less lingcod than we've seen down there in past years. Um, 
but very, very good reds. Very good reds for the That's most right. part. Got to love it, for sure, Colin. And you'll be running again this Friday. Yeah, we're departing 7 o'clock Friday night. All right, very good. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. And when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. More your phone calls, more great information. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. This is Captain Art Taylor of The Searcher. Celia and I and everyone at Team Searcher would like to thank all of our customers for a successful 2018 season. Are you searching for an affordable fishing adventure from one and a half to seven days in length? The Searcher has an outstanding crew, great food, air-conditioned cabins and galley, and an RSW system to preserve your catch. Our 2019 schedule is available now. Book your fishing adventure online at searchersportfishing.com or call our office at 619 619- 226-2403. That's 619-226-2403. Hey, this is Rosie with Cedro Sport Fishing. Cedros Island is considered the yellow tail and calico bass fishing capital in the world, and nobody does it better than Cedro Sport Fishing. We are committed to providing first-class service to our guests, as well as an unforgettable fishing experience. We have made a good thing even better. We now have a direct flight departing through the CBX in San Diego. Leave home in the morning and fish in the afternoon. We have a beautiful waterfront lodge with first-class accommodations and meals. What are you waiting for? Call me at 619-772-7570 or check out sadosportfishing.com. Book soon. Trips are going fast. Time to get your gear. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. Big fish need big tackle, and that's why we recommend the Shimano Talica for tuna, Trinidad for Wahoo, matched with a Therese rod. Choosing the right size Talica, Trinidad, and Therese is the trick, and that's where we come in, with more experience and expertise on long-range fishing than anyone. Fisherman's Landing Tackle has the Shimano gear for your long-range trip. Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego or on the web at saltwatertackle.com. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Our hard-working crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trips, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing is now a full-service sport fishing operation, offering great half- and full-day open party trips. Book online at fisherman'slanding.com. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. For over five decades, Lee Palm Sport Fishing has set the standard in long-range fishing that they pioneered long ago. The Red Rooster 3 sets a new standard of excellence. The Red Rooster 3 is one of the most modern, quiet, and fastest long-range vessels in the fleet. They have handpicked the finest crew to make your trip a memorable one. The Red Rooster 3 offers trips from 3 to 18 days and runs year-round to the best fishing spots on the planet. Ride the Red Rooster 3 once and you'll be back again. Call the Red Rooster 3 at 619 224 57 or see them on the web at redrooster3.com. We all need to get around, but we all need something different from our vehicles. Your San Diego County Ford dealers have you covered if you're looking for a new truck this month. Plus, it's SUV season, so they have great deals for everyone. Whether it's a new Echo Sport that is nimble and fun around town, or the Ford Explorer that is capable of putting a boat in the water and has seating for seven, Ford has you covered. Ford trucks and SUVs aren't just powerful and legendary. They have the latest technology that helps you seamlessly connect your smartphone and ensure you're safe on the road. Features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist on trucks are truly a game changer at the ramp, helping you back up a trailer by simply turning a knob on the dash and doing the hard work for you. So check out all the great deals during SUV season and save some money on the right gear for you. Learn more at buyfordnow.com or visit your San Diego County Ford dealers today, they'll be glad to hook you up. San Diego's sports leader, the home of ESPN Radio, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. All right, let's head up to the Los Angeles Boat Show. Final day today for the Los Angeles Boat Show. We have a show producer Duncan McIntosh on the line. Good morning, Duncan. Hey, good morning. Glad to be with you. Hey, great to have you. Great, great weekend. Perfect weekend yeah. at the Fairplex in Pomona to have the Los Angeles Boat Show. The weather really cooperated with you this weekend, didn't it, Duncan? Well, it was a little wet and cold yesterday, but it's all back today, and it's it's actually pretty nice. Yeah, and and it's breezy on the water, so no reason to go out there. Come on over to the boat show and see some great stuff. What are we going to see for fishermen out there? Well, we've got the latest boats uh, from Parker. Uh, I don't know. They got about seven or eight boats in West Marine, uh, from West Coast Marine. Great. We've got uh, that Scout 
got a big, large display from Scott this year from Johnson. So, they, they, of course, the Everglades, uh, the Ballos, the Defiance, the Wellcraft. Oh, on and on and on. Sea Fox, Tierra, Blacktoon, um, Tracker, Ranger, Triton. And uh, just, you know, we have the biggest display of performance boats this year, and it's being rivaled by the uh, by the Trail of Swordfishers. It's just been awesome what the turnout we got. It's the biggest show that we've produced here ourselves. That's great. Wow, that's fantastic. Kevin at the West Coast Marine has a bunch of parkers down there, and I know the guys from Sea Deck are there. And You have a lot of accessories like Sea Deck for the boats too, right? Yes, we do. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the list is so long, I'm having a hard time remembering. <laughs> I, I swear, I had problem. to write them down the other day. That's a good problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great problem. So the show is at the Fairplex in Pomona, and what time does it start today? Uh, it opens at 10, and we uh, run until 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Admission? Uh, fifteen dollars. That's it. Uh, children under twelve are free. Uh, military IDs get in with a five dollar discount. All right. And how do we get tickets? Well, you can go online, but they're at the ticket. They're at the show at the entrance. That's yeah, probably your right. best bet today. Right at the entrance. Uh, go to Los Angeles Boat Show, Fairplex and Pomona. Easy to get to from everywhere in Southern California, right? Whether you're in L.A., Orange County, San Diego, Riverside, San Bernardino, Fairplex is right in the middle of everything, Perfect. right? And the 10 dumps right into the show. Great. The 10 right there. All right. Well, go get a, go get all the new boats, all the new accessories will be today. And go say hi to Duncan and our buddy Tim Baker at the Los Angeles Boat Show today. Thanks, Duncan. Hey, hey thank you very much, Pete. Good talking to you. All right. Nice talking to you. Right. Appreciate the call uh-huh. this morning. All right. Well, the, the phones are packed up. Everybody's excited to talk to the boys. Why don't we jump right back in and talk to Jeff calling us from Bonita this morning. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning, Jeff. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I, yeah, I was on that calling that trip last week with Adam, and you know, I know he's talking about the fish and and uh, you know everybody getting a lot of reds and white fish and, and doing the patty hopping. But this first time I was on the New Loan, and uh, the fishing was great, but the experience was even better. I mean, the seminar that Adam did uh, before we left and what the rig, how to rig, size hooks, baits, the whole nine yards was just amazing. The uh, breakfast and the lunch and the dinner was long range uh, food. And, uh, and then the, and then the regulars that are on that boat, um, a lot of times you get on a boat and regulars aren't really, uh, you know, real friendly, but I, I mean, the regulars were just amazing. And, uh, uh, and, and I want to call out Mr. Lee. Yeah, I mean, he was just <laughs> helping everybody out on that boat. So, uh, fishing was good, but the experience was even better. So thanks a lot for uh, making it a great trip. Oh, thank you. We we really appreciate hearing that. Yeah, it was great having you on board. All right. Going to go do it again? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I've already used up all my reds and stuff when Fish Talk was on uh, the football last Sunday. So, oh, so good. <laughs> time to reload. Time to, get, time to reload. Going to Gonzaga this weekend. Or next weekend, and then the following weekend, I'll be out there. All right. Well, have a great trip, and uh, thanks a lot for the call and the nice kudos about uh, New Luan uh, at, down at Colonet. So fun. That's fun awesome. Trips. Yeah, for sure. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones. How about Randy in Costa Mesa up next on Let's Talk Hook Up? Hi, Randy. Thanks for hanging in there, Randy. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Thanks for getting me on, to, on the air today, guys. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. Hey, I wanted to uh, ask about the length of trips. I know that you specialize in, in one day and day and a half, but do you guys ever do any longer trips, like uh, three days and, and that kind of thing? And I'll take the answer off the air. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Randy. Anything uh, longer than day and a half? Well, sure. We we do, like I said, we were doing a bunch of those two- and three-quarter-day trips in the fall. We're, we're going to do that again this year. They were super successful. Uh I'd always been a little bit concerned about our bait capacity, but limiting the number of people, it, it was never an issue. So, And on the two and three that. quarter, how many people were you limited to? Yeah, 22. 22. Wow, that's, what a nice yeah, load. That's, sweet. Yeah. that's a good load. And so what's the game plan, Adam, on, on a two and three quarter day trip that you did? Uh, well, leaving at noon. So at noon? It gives us somewhat of an opportunity if there's, you know, fish um, within, you know, 10 hours away or so we could be hooked up by midnight we actually had a i think two of our trips this year where we left at noon and we were hooked up into some cows around midnight so, <laughs> so pretty lucky that is so cool yeah no now was, that was fishing you know 100 miles from home 110 miles from home so fishing that evening 
then the next day, all day the next day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then all day the, the following day? All day, the well, all night, the next night, all the, and then all the day, day the next day. And then all day the next day. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. So you're getting on a two and three quarter, and then when do you come back? The following morning? Yeah, right. so, yeah, it's just like a two and a half day, basically, but you leave at noon. At noon the instead day of seven o'clock. Yep, yep. yep. It gives you an opportunity to fish all night. Yeah. Night. Well, it Most just gives people. you more options, you know. There, right. Who knows what you're going to do, but it it, yeah. it it gives you a lot more options. Yeah. Jim Hughes was saying yesterday, um, you know, that there's there's nothing there's nothing better than to be able to give your area a fair amount of time to look it over. Or things things are, can be different in the morning than they can in the afternoon, and it gives just the more amount of time, you know, a guy like Marcus or a guy like Adam has behind the wheel and behind the sonar and just to get to really give an area a fair shake, you know, because conditions could be completely different, you know, daylight, morning to afternoon. And a trip that long just gives you more time on the ground. Even if you're in this, even if you don't move at all, you're in the same general 10 mile area. You just get more time to figure figure those things out and put the boat where you think it should be when, when they're wanting to, to bite. Well, plus the bite windows a lot of times were fairly short sometimes and it's hard to predict when that was going to be you know it could be and like i said we i mean we had i think we we had one trip this year we caught it was a day and a half trip we caught one fish from daylight until dark 140 pound bluefin i think I mean, it was tough. We saw just a ton of fish all day. They were just everywhere. Could not buy a bite. Nothing. No, nothing. From sunset on, it was good. And it was <laughs> really good fishing from really? sunset yeah, till midnight. Boring. You know, we ended up having a spectacular trip. But, I, you know, without having the ability to spend the time, right. it would have been a bust. Because they bite when they want to bite, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And what when, once it was game on, what was the hot ticket? That particular trip, it was it was all jig fish, all for the most part flat fall, flat fall, or you know that there we had a couple guys fishing PL sixty eights and stuff. There were other things that were working. Yeah, but it was uh, it was all nighttime jig fishing, and it was kind of a trip because it was like we were short stopping. You know, we'd hook two or three or four fish, get them and take off, look for another sonar school and hit them again. And you'd hook two or three or five, or maybe you'd get a good one. You'd hook 10 or 12 and fish anywhere from 40 to 200 pounds. Jeez, that's so Didn't get cool. a lot of sleep that night, did you? No. <laughs> yeah, we had to get in the morning. So we yeah. off of it. <laughs> Indeed. All right, Jam, phones are fan pack. Let's jump back into it, Rick. Charlie and Gardena is up next on Let's Talk Hookup. What's up, Charlie? Good morning, Charlie. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, everyone. I had good a uh, question for Marcus and Adam there. Um, Marcus, do you know when you're going to or are you going to fish the offshore jackpot in June? And when are you going to start taking reservations? And is Lonnie still with you guys? Lonnie's still there. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to do the offshore jackpot this year. You were popular last year, I guess. I, were, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, and the year before, too. You know, they, they they really changed the format of that tournament around. It's kind of made it less attractive to us. So we'll we'll see. We'll have to figure it out. All right. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. How about we jump on, talk to Don, calling from Temecula this morning. Hey, Don, welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Thanks for joining us, Don. Hey, good morning. Morning. So, um, so my wife's been freshwater fishing with me, and now she's um, deciding she wants to go out in the ocean on a boat. Um, I don't know about her getting seasick. Um, any suggestions on what I could do to prepare her for a trip? Well, I'd probably try to figure out if she gets seasick before you go out on too long a trip. Maybe take her on a half-day trip or something first and see how susceptible she is. I mean, I think most yeah. people get seasick or are susceptible to motion sickness in some degree. Most people can get used to it pretty quickly. Um, and there's medications, would, There too. are medications, but the thing is it. Some medications work really well for some people, and some are are terrible. I'd I'd be skeptical of of the patches. We've had a couple people that had some really really adverse effects to those things, so I would I would avoid that 
But, so, uh, doctor, but then the people that have adverse effects to the patches can take the pill form. You can compound the scopolamine in a pill. Yeah, the scopolamine, and, I, and, and, I would stay away some from. Some people take that. Some people have success with it, but again, like any medication, but, call your doctor. Yeah, the boning or marazine, I've seen a lot of people have good luck with that. The only thing is you have to take it before you're feeling the effects. So figure out something that doesn't make you too tired. Ginger works, right? Sometimes. For some people. Yeah, for some people. But we, yeah, we figure. sell that boning as just an over the counter and I think as long as you get that in your system, I mean take take a pill 12 hours before you go, you know, take it in the morning or take it in the afternoon when you're having lunch before you go on your trip and then maybe take another one the you know the the morning you wake up to fishing and that stuff's pretty darn inexpensive, it's pretty cheap and as long as it's taken as a preventative and not a cure, I think that stuff works for most people and it's That works for most people. Cheap. Yeah. Don't it? wait until you're feel if you yeah. wait till you're sick, they, it's yeah. not going to work. But makes you a little drowsy, but you know. Yeah, but not got to most people not too bad. Not too bad. Dramamine, I think, gets... Dramamine, Dramamine knocks Dramamine, most people out. Dramamine gets most people pretty bad. We sell that bonine. It's, bonine we, we always say the same thing. It, it's pretty much the same thing. It just doesn't really cause the drowsiness. But again, any yeah, medication, always, always, always talk always, to your always. doctor before you take it. We're not advocating anything. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't double doctor. up. Yeah, no no don't patch. Double up. And yeah, right. yeah, don't do the double. No, it's, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. You, you yeah. Then run, you're in trouble. And you... Do silly things. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you can get silly your things. wife out fishing. Uh, good luck. Yeah, good luck, on. buddy. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right. How about we next talk to Sam, who's calling from Irvine. Hi, Sam. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Good morning, Sam. Appreciate your call this morning. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, I did get out with Marcus twice this year, once on the jackpot and shoot out. And once at the end of the year, I got a uh, 100-pounder on 40-pound line, which was probably my best catch ever. Ooh, cause it was a nice. Challenge. Good catch. Right on. Yeah. But uh, – you know, I didn't hear much about popper fishing this year, and I was thinking about getting a popper outfit, and I, it, would that even be worth it? It seems like everything was flat fall and bait and everything and that type of thing. I'll tell you next year. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were talking about that earlier in the show, how they just, I mean, it was the thing for two years, right? I, yeah, you know, it. those poppers in the right conditions work really well. If If there's tight bait balls where there's fish crashing through the middle of it, those poppers are really effective. If that's not the game plan, it's really, really hard to get a bite on one. Yeah. I see so, getting both. Yeah. It, you got to have the arsenal, right? Right. Yeah. It, it. And those poppers, you can almost always catch yellowfin on them when there's yellowfin around. It's, it's a fun outfit to have for bluefin. The conditions have to be right. If you are serious about adding gear to your arsenal, you're always going to be better off adding a heavy two-speed bait outfit before you do a popper rod. A heavy bait rod you're going to use every season, no matter what, for the rest of your life. And if all the stars align, you'll use a popping rod. You know, if you're if you're just talking about adding gear to your quiver, make sure you got a you know 50, 60, 80 pound two-speed first before you buy a dedicated popper outfit. And you've got a big one on a Tranx 500 and a and a long rod, a Terramar rod, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and you, you can throw a popper on a sure. Trans 500. I mean, most most of the catch other fish on it most of those, you know, popper surface iron type blue fins we caught, it was all just on the same gear we'd fish yellowtail and sure. you know and, and tuna with. So you don't need a, a Stella uh, twenty thousand and a specialized rod, but yeah, I mean, it you know, helps. You don't need it, but you know, we're fishermen. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't we don't listen to need <laughs> yeah. very often. We're we're want guys, not need yeah. guys. Like yeah. we we operate on a different program. It, it definitely uh, the popper works. On a on a spinning reel, I just I'm just gonna go on there. Yeah. I know a lot of you guys don't like spinning reels, but the popper does have good action on spinning reels. There you go. Yeah. So if that's what you want to throw, there you go. Thanks a lot for the call. All right. How about we jump back in? Talk to Rich calling us from Bradley this morning. Hi, Rich. Welcome to the show. Hi, Rich. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Information this morning and extra in interesting and entertaining as well. My question for Marcus and Adam is uh, the difference between fishing for yellowfin and fishing for bluefin. And I'm wondering also if the yellowfin are as spooky as the bluefin are. I would say typically yellowfin are not as spooky as bluefin, for sure. Uh, you know, there's a lot of differences, I guess. But there's times when there's a lot of similarities. I'm, you know, smaller yellowfin tend to be a lot less picky. They're a lot easier to catch, typically, than bluefin. Bluefin, you, 
You have to be doing things right to catch them most of the time. A lot of practice. Yeah, <laughs> yellowfin are a lot of practice. Yeah. Yellowfin are a, a lot more forgiving. As yellowfin get bigger, though, they get smarter. It seems like, and it, you have to work at it a lot harder. Fishing for bigger yellowfin is is much more similar to, to bluefin type fishing. Also, as as the yellowfin get bigger, they tend to you know, they can go down deeper in the water column and act much more like bluefin. So I, I guess there's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences, too. Indeed. Typically, thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right, hey, when we come back, we're going to find out who's going fishing on the new low and more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way on the Mighty 1090. Yamaha Outboard Say Yes to Reliability sales event is here. For a limited time, purchase an eligible new 2.5 to 115 horsepower four-stroke and get five years of warranty protection plus up to $500 in dealer credit. New 150 to 300 horsepower four-strokes get six years of warranty protection. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Visit your local Yamaha dealer today. Offer ends March 31st, 2019, subject to change at any time. Other restrictions and conditions apply. See authorized participating Yamaha outboard dealers for details. This promotion cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. It's time to get excited about fishing, and Point Loma Sport Fishing has everything you'll need. They offer half-day and three-quarter day trips daily, perfect for families and the novice or seasoned fishermen. Point Loma Sport Fishing also offers overnight to multi-day trips, targeting the best of seasonal catches. Visit their website at pointlomasportfishing.com where you can purchase tickets online and get more information on the trips available. Or call 619-223-1627. Alaska's Katmai Lodge is a world-class wilderness fishing paradise on the banks of the famed Alagnac River. You'll fish for all five species of Pacific salmon, king, sockeye, chum, coho, and on even years, pinks, plus trophy-sized rainbow trout, arctic grayling, and dolly varden, both in the Alagnac and the nearby waters. Katmai Lodge's U.S. Coast Guard and CPR certified guides are fishing fanatics and know how to help you reel them in. They are exceptional teachers and ensure you have days that are fish-filled and fun with freshly prepared snacks and barbecued lunches on the river. Back at the lodge, there are fireside appetizers and refreshments each afternoon, as well as fresh, delicious meals prepared by their exceptional chef. Elevate your visit with a quick fly-out trip to Brooks Falls in Katmai National Park for world-renowned bear watching. For the best fishing adventure ever, visit katmai.com. That's K-A-T-M-A-I dot com. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 58 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision-built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built by fishermen for fishermen. From our next generation waterproof shorts like Tactical or Stealth to our new anhydrous waterproof jacket and bibs, the entire AFCO clothing line is purpose-built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and features designed to deliver for the demanding angler. To find AFCO products, go to AFCO.com and find a dealer near you. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090 Ride. Right, the big winner going fishing on the new low end on a one-day trip is going to Mike in Torrance. Mike, congratulations. You are going to love fishing the low end. Indeed. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Adam. If if somebody wants to come fishing on the new low end, uh, so when do you put schedules up for the summer? I know you have schedules up for on PointLomasportFishing.com right now for uh, we'll be the calling up trips. before the end of the month. The, oh, okay. For the summer? Yeah. Okay. Up, what up. if somebody wants to charter? Uh, call right now. Yeah. Book it. Yep. Book it soon because probably prime a lot of prime dates are not there. Uh, yeah, uh, they're 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 disappearing for sure. The easiest thing to do is just call Point Loma Sport Fishing. I I'm out fishing all the time. You can you can call me too. But I don't have a dedicated secretary, but the uh, the office is always there. They can always help you. The guys at Point Lomas Sport yep. Fishing. All right. All right. Well, very good. Adam, 
Call us from uh, Colonet. Let us know how the fishing is. Yeah, yeah we'll, let us know. That'd be awesome. We'll, right. we'll give you a shout. All right. Very good. And good luck. Congratulations on your huge success with the tuna in 2018 and huge success to both of you guys in 2019, too. Look forward to having you back Thanks, on guys. the show for sure. And look forward to having you back next Saturday and Sunday. You heard it. Next Saturday, the introduction of the brand new captain on the Shogun right here on Let's Talk Cook Up, Captain Paul Caramero. We know him. He was on the Royal Star. Now he's going to be the owner. Part owner of the Shogun, along with Renee. He used to work for me. Oh, that's right. He used yeah, to be on the Milo Ad. Cut his teeth. Paul's a great guy, and he's gonna. He and Renee are gonna be a team Ugh. on that Shogun. That's gonna be next Saturday, and then next Sunday, Jeff Hughes from H and H Marine, a guy that works on a lot of my stuff on my boats. He's a very, very knowledgeable mechanic and outboard guy extraordinaire. So that's going to be next Saturday, next Sunday on Let's Talk Hookup. Thanks to Adam for all he does. Check out our app and our website for everything Let's Talk Hookup, and we'll see you next week right back here on the Mighty 1090.